It was well known in the 19th century that by far the best whip was that made of an eel's skin. You just slipped a handle into the head end of the eel skin and lashed it tight with string. A good eel skin whip was wonderfully lasting, even better than leather if not allowed to dry out. This is how eels ended up in the contract's case, Hobbs v. Massasoit Whip Company. Charles Hobbs had sold eel skins to Massasoit Whip Company several times. He knew the drill. The Whip Company wanted eel skins that were in good condition and over 22 inches long. It paid 5 cents each for skins over 27 inches and 2 cents for skins between 22 and 27 inches. Hobbs worked with a middleman, Mr. Harding, who took the eel skins from him and delivered them to the Whip Company. On February 18, 1890, Hobbs delivered a shipment of 2,350 eel skins to Harding. Harding delivered them to Massasoit's place of business in Westfield. Hobbs waited to be paid. The skins sat in the Whip Company's facility for several months. Then the warehouse burned down and they were destroyed. Hobbs had never heard from the company. Hobbs sued for breach of contract, seeking payment of $108.50. He argued that he had a standing offer to send skins to the Whip Company and that the company's silence on the matter and its keeping of the skins warranted Hobbs's assumption that the company had accepted them. The company president, Mr. Purney, testified that he'd never ordered those eel skins from Hobbs and had never accepted them. He claimed that the skins were too short and unfit for use. His shipping clerk and treasurer agreed that the skins were very short, in very bad shape, not fit for use, and worthless. The trial judge instructed the jury that Hobbs could recover only for skins that conformed with the whip company's requirements. If the skins were of poor quality and the whip company had notified Hobbs of this fact, then Hobbs couldn't recover. But whether or not the whip company had agreed to take the skins, if the company had reason to suppose that Hobbs believed they were taking them and it lay back and said nothing to Hobbs, then the jury should find for Hobbs. The jury, evidently finding that the eel skins had been of adequate quality and that Hobbs had received no notice otherwise, returned a verdict for Hobbs. Massasoit appealed to the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts. 